Hi guys, in this new series, I'm going to talk about SBI, simulation-based inference. And in this first video, I will introduce what is the problem and the outline of the series as I see it. So simulation-based inference is basically a term that kind of encapsulates what is also called ABC, approximate base computation, or LFI, likelihood free inference. But this is kind of uh, the new term, which also sometimes maybe referred to only the new algorithms. I'm not sure. But I'm going to call all these algorithms uh, SBI, simulation based inference. So, what is the traditional Bayesian problem? The traditional Bayesian problem is that we are trying to find a posterior, and it's a bit hard because we can't compute the evidence, right? We have that by Bayes' rule that um, this is equal to this. And the prior and the likelihood we usually have, we, we can compute them, but to integrate them over all the possible values of the parameters theta to get the evidence, this is usually a very hard problem and we can't do this. So the solutions to this problem have been uh, Monte Carlo solution, rejection sampling, important sampling, et cetera, Markov chain Monte Carlo, Metropolis, Hastings, Hamiltonian, and nuts, and variational inference. Okay, so when we approximate the posterior by some surrogate form and we try to uh, reduce the distance between the two distributions. But this is all the traditional problem. In simulation based inference, the problem is actually somewhere else. And the problem is that we can't even write analytically the likelihood. So we cannot express this term analytically. Um, we can, however, still sample from, uh, from x given theta. So we have this simulator, we have this model where you put in a theta and it outputs uh, an observation in x. So we have a generative model, but we can't analytically write the likelihood. And this is usually the case in complex simulators. I think usually these simulators, they involved stochastic differential equations. If they are simple enough, okay, so stochastic differential equations, there is a whole field covering this, uh, for example, using Ito calculus. And if the equations are simple enough, you can actually get an analytical solution to the problem. And the analytical solution will be a random variable or a distribution. But here they are usually too complex, so you can't use um stochastic differential equation and instead you have to use these new methods in short what we have is we have this parameter we put it in a simulator and it generates some data for us and we want to find the posterior distribution of data given some empirical observed data i noticed that there is some distinction between um the X observed, which is something that we actually observed in nature, for example, some actual phenomenon that we observed, and the X simulated, which is something that our simulator is trying to simulate. Yeah, we are trying basically to fit the simulator such that it will uh, mimic the real process as good as possible. And for the simulator, we can uh, have unlimited access. So we can always plug in a parameter, simulate some x. Yeah, but we want to find the parameters that mostly fit what actually we observed. So the x that we actually observed in nature. And usually we would want to get a distribution, but a sample from the posterior will also do. And so let's talk about the outline of this series. We will start with the, we will start with the classical ABC solutions, uh, starting with rejection ABC which was uh, the first solution offered. It came from a problem in genetics, but the idea itself seems to have been conceived before. You should check the Wikipedia history page about it if you are interested. And then we'll talk about some improvements to it. MCMC ABC, sequential Monte Carlo ABC. Then we will talk about regression adjustment, which is kind of, even though it came before the other two uh, improvements, Conceptually, it fits better to the next stage because um, regression adjustment was a first step and then came a nonlinear regression adjustment, which used a neural network already. And then came all the other neural density estimators. 
um, that kind of further developed this concept. Uh, the first class of density estimators called SNPE or NPE, notice that the sequential here I mark in a different color because you don't really have to use it in a sequential form, even though usually it's better. So it originated from a paper by Papa Macarius and Murray, I think, in 2016. And then it was further improved by Lukman and Associates in 2017. And, and it was even further advanced by Greenberg and Associates in 2019. And these all, they tried to basically approximate the posterior directory. Okay, so they take all the data that you have, they fit a neural network, and they try to approximate the posterior. Another option is approximating the likelihood. So we haven't, right, we can't, we don't have this analytical form of the likelihood, we don't have this distribution. Why don't we just try to fit a distribution using a neural network, neural density estimated to this uh, likelihood? So this is what this other class of um, algorithms do. There are two papers, one by Lukman, but one by Papa Macarius, but they basically do the same thing. Only the first one has some active learning. There was a paper by Durkin, Papa Macarius, and Murray that showed that there was no improvement of the first method over the second on their selected problems, but active learning could still be something beneficial in general. Then there's another algorithm called SNRE, which instead of trying to approximate the posterior or the likelihood, tries to estimate the likelihood ratio, which appears in the MCMC um, algorithm. So it's a way to do MCMC, but we don't know the likelihoods. Well, let's just take both likelihoods, treat it as a ratio, and then estimate that. And all these methods, SNPE, SNLE, SNRE, they are all, uh, they have some building blocks. Yeah, they don't just use any neural network. Um, they use they use neural density estimator. The first one is called MDN, Mixture Density Networks. Uh, it uh, was conceived by Bishop in 1994. And the second one is called normalizing flows. There's a lot of types of those. I will talk about uh, masked autoregressive flows suggested by Papa Macarius et al. And it uses another type of network called MADE. Um, this is the network that he used, I think, in this paper. And so this is the one I will uh, show. And okay, so since we will be dealing with neural networks, some basic understanding of neural networks uh, is needed, but I think maybe not too much. One question you might ask is what is the trade-off between these classic uh, solutions to these newer solutions? So the ABC solutions are simpler. They have less overhead. You don't have to train a neural network. And this is a, a consideration if the simulations are very expensive might be a better choice. They are also more robust to model misspecification than the neural network-based models. But the neural network methods are more powerful. You get better accuracy for less samples. You get more bang for your buck. And they also reduce the ad hoc decisions that you have to make in ABC. So as we will see in ABC, we have to decide on a distance metric, a threshold. Uh, and in uh, neural network-based methods, you don't have to do this. And also they can learn by themselves a summary statistics, which is also something that you need to do in ABC. But we will touch upon this later. And just note that the, the consideration here that there is a distinction between the number of simulations and the overall computation time, because uh, it could be that the number of simulations is lower, which is a good thing if your simulations is very expensive, but if your simulations are very cheap, and uh, the number of simulation is lower, but training the neural network is longer, then it might not be so good. So this is what I mean here that um, uh, you really have to figure out how expensive are your simulations to choose if it's worthwhile doing the neural network based methods or not. Okay, and uh, there are also other solutions. I'm not sure I will touch them or not. Um, there's something called synthetic likelihood. Uh, which kind of tries to replace the likelihood by other means, not just a neural network. Uh, there's also papers that I've seen that use random forest. The, there are papers that I've seen that use variational inference. I haven't gone into them yet, so I really don't know. There's something called EPI, which from uh, leafing through it, I think it's kind of a mix between variational inference and normalizing flow. And there's probably a lot of other solutions to this problem. 
obviously we won't touch on everything. And code wise, I think for the ABC, I will use R because it's maybe simpler. There's also packages. There's also packages in Python, but I think it's simpler to use R in this. But once you go to neural networks, I just don't think R is built for dealing with neural networks. So I will use Python. And then also there's already a library that uh, implements uh, SBI algorithms uh, like SNPE, SNLE, and SNRE, and it's available on GitHub. So this is why I will be using Python. So obviously R and Python uh, could come in useful if you want to understand and follow this series. So this is all for this intro video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.